Father's Day is coming up Sunday, and when you're not busy thinking of what you should buy me, you <laughs> might want to think about how we can create the next generation of godly men. Kent Evans has spent some time doing that. He joins us now to discuss his program. And Kent, you say you have personally experienced the guidance of godly men and changing the course of your life. Share with us that experience. Yeah, when I was a teenager, I went through, uh, my parents were divorced, and the time was troubling and confusing and made me angry. I went to a counselor, and the counselor told me that I, my anger and my frustration was going to send me down a bad path. And he said, you know, you cannot become the un-something. And that sentence mm -hmm. never left me. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you can't focus on what you don't want to be. You need to focus on what you do want to be. And I said, so what's the antidote? And he said, find men who have what you want and get around them and learn what they want and how, what makes them tick. And you will become like those guys. Instead of trying to run from something, you need to start trying to run towards something. And that was the beginning of this journey for me. How do you find those guys? You know, I was just at lunch with a couple last week and um, through church or friends or networking or I may just find someone. One time I went to a seminar and the guy speaking was impressive and seemed like he knew what he was talking about. And so I pulled him aside after, and uh, today he's uh, a good friend of mine and a mentor of mine. I've known him for 15 years, mm -hmm. and I met him because he was giving a keynote address at a lunch seminar. What would you say are some of the key principles that uh, he imparted to you so that you could be the man you are today? Yeah, the guys who have been around me have been very transparent and very okay. honest. A couple things they've shown me is, number one, have a devotion to my wife. We talk about marriage as being a bedrock for fatherhood and that it's a lot easier to raise kids in the context of a healthy marriage. And so I have an amazing wife. Uh, <clears throat> I picked well, uh, and uh, God <laughs> blessed me in that regard. I have a very godly wife. And that's one, guys have taught me to keep my marriage at the center of my priorities. And they've also told me to be very transparent with my boys, uh, to be, when I fail, mm -hmm. to be willing to tell them, hey, dad messed up, and it's okay, and I need to ask their forgiveness. So those are a couple things I've learned along the way. You know, we have so many statistics today that talk about a fatherless Oof. program, yeah. divorce uh, rampant in the United States. So there are many people that go in with the good intentions that you talk about yeah. and aren't able to accomplish them. How can they get restarted? Yeah, I think that um, there's a lot of hope for people who have gone a path that is not the ideal path, the path they didn't set out to go down, there's a lot of hope. I mean, our God is in the business of uh, restoring and redeeming, and that's what he does for a living. And so those people who have gone down that path, you look at biblical heroes like David and Paul who went down a very bad path and then turned out to be heroes of the faith. And I think those folks just need hope. You have a program now that you call Manhood Journey, and you started this program within your own church. Mm -hmm. Talk about some of the results that you've seen within your own community from this. Yeah, that's been uh, crazy because we started this as a bit of an experiment. Could we get fathers and sons around the Bible in homes in groups of 8 or 10 or 15 and have them talk about Scripture together? And these might be boys who are 8 or 10 years old or 16 or 18, boys you might characterize as not wanting to have a biblical <laughs> conversation uh, <clears throat> sometimes. But what we found is the exact opposite. We found that when you throw topics out on the table that are biblical and interesting, and if dad's willing to be transparent a little bit, the boys open up. It's been amazing. Okay, so the wives of these men must love your program. <laughs> <laughs> We've kind of talked about that a little bit, that we have some testimonial videos of dads and sons talking, mm -hmm. and we really need to go shoot some with some of the ladies because I do. They A lot of them go to my church. There's a, 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 a large group of folks in this program in my home church and I see these ladies a lot and their, hus their wives of friends of mine and they make comments about their husbands being different, the relationships at home being different. It's a very positive experience for them. When they say different, what, what improvement has happened? Yeah, the improvements are generally dialogue related. So they go from being able to not being able to have conversations about matters of import or significance to being able to have conversations about things that are maybe biblical or topics around purity for young men or topics around choosing friends or wisdom or leadership or money, those kind of topics start to get on the table where before they were a little bit uh, handled with kid gloves, so to speak. To play devil's advocate here a little bit, you're talking about people who already go to church mm. who are in these types of circumstances. I can hear the voices of people out there watching right now saying, well, that's all great. I mean, those kids have been mm -hmm. raised in godly mm. homes. What about for a kid that might be, you know, scanning across the dial, he comes across this He's not from a church family. He doesn't have a dad at home. 
How does he get onto the manhood journey? For yeah, I think that um, for those kids, that's kind of my story. Yeah. So I look back in my life, and I have a good dad who was engaged. He coached my teams. He drove me places. He taught me how to fix cars, those kind of things, which I guess a lot of that I've forgotten. Um, for those kids, there is hope. And in God's word, we find our father. So the model of fatherhood that we want to have on earth, we do have in God our father. And so for me, a lot of my early fatherhood learning came from scripture directly. So if you're a young man watching this, I would say to you, uh, get in God's word. He wants to parent you directly. Well, we're going to talk about more about this program with Kent Evans when we return on Harvest after this. <music> 